Tibet House member video. Originally recorded during the Force for Good class series in January 2016 with Sharon Salzberg and friends. As uh, the Buddha himself is so famous for having said, he said, don't believe anything. Don't believe anything because I said it. Don't believe anything because a great elder has said it. Don't believe anything because you've read it in a sacred text. He said, put it into practice. See for yourself what's true. And as I said the other night, when I went to India and I began meditating, it was in the context of an intensive 10-day retreat. And the first night, as San Goenka, who was the, my teacher, my first teacher, said, so this is the first night of my first actual exposure to meditation, he said the Buddha did not teach Buddhism, the Buddha taught a way of life. So from day one, that has been like a, a foundational statement for me and a real pillar of my understanding. So even though I'm going to quote the Buddha and it's all, well, for me, it's just so easy to use those stories and anecdotes and that imagery. Um, it's a very personal thing, and it, it has nothing to do with really becoming a Buddhist. It has to do with how one lives one's life and, and sifting through all the messages we get about what makes us strong and where happiness is going to lie and what we're capable of. Sometimes we're taught we're capable of so little, and really we're capable of so much. And so. Um, it's all about one's own experience in the end. So in that context, how do we manifest good in the world? How do we really make a difference in the world? Well, to begin with, we look at our own happiness, which seems ironic because I think we're often taught that that's selfish or self-centered or self-preoccupied, and that's, in some ways, you would say that's the whole problem. But it's actually not the urge to be happy that's the problem. It's our very limited notions and distorted thinking about where happiness is to be found, the greatest happiness is to be found. You know, if only I had a bigger apartment I would be happy. If only I had the perfect relationship, which of course would never, ever, ever change, <laughs> then I would be happy. If only they made a Toyota sedan with four wheel drive again, then I would be happy. <laughs> These are you know, my personal. <laughs> if only, whatever. Um, you know, and, and really, if we can combine that urge for happiness with wisdom instead of with ignorance and just what we've been taught and, you know, being kind of gullible, just believing the things we've been taught, then it's a very powerful force because then that urge for happiness becomes like a homing instinct for freedom. We can cut through many obstacles. So. To learn about the Tibet House member archives and upcoming Tibet House member trips with geographic expeditions, please visit tibethouse.us. Tashi Dilek and thanks for watching.